Hello and welcome to a new chapter of environmental system. Today's topic is going to be the energy flow through the ecosystem. The beautiful early morning brings to the eyes of most people the idea that all things are beginning to be alive. Nothing too far from the truth. The beautiful and powerful sun sends some of its vast energy to the earth and that makes the life process to continue every day. The plants, also known as primary producers, absorb part of the solar power in order to start the process of photosynthesis, in which they combine the carbon dioxide from the environment and the water from the soil to make the precious glucose, which is the food for all living things. This glucose will later be transformed into ATP, which is the energy of life. When we continue to trace where that energy from the plants go, we find the primary consumers or herbivores. They differ from the plants in the way that herbivores cannot make their own food. Therefore, they have to consume the glucose by eating plants. In this way, they can absorb the glucose and transform it into ATP to perform their basic functions. Farther away from the herbivores, we find the secondary consumers that we usually refer to as carnivores. Their digestive systems are not specialized to digest plants, so in order to obtain the glucose they need to transform into ATP, carnivores have to eat other organisms, which in most cases are the primary consumers. When you imagine that there can't be any other organism that will eat the carnivores, we find the tertiary consumers. These organisms are also called carnivores. However, they are on top of the food chain because they are capable of eating not only the primary consumers, but also other carnivores. An example of this will be the eagle that could eat a rabbit just as well as a small carnivore. We cannot finish the energy flow in the ecosystem without talking about the decomposers. They wisely return the nutrients back to the soil so that they can be used once again by the plant. They do it so by decomposing the dead organisms and the fecal waste into different kinds of minerals and nutrients that then they are absorbed by the plants to help in their functions. Well. With this, we have seen how the energy flows through the ecosystem and how everything forms a big circle that links the living with the non-living parts of the environment that surrounds us. I hope that you have enjoyed this class and I will see you soon for a new topic. Goodbye.